Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Anne-Marie, for having me on this um, amazing panel and uh, for giving me your hand to enter this uh, great community of women of the future. I'm really happy to be with you all this morning. Uh, or, oh, like Anne-Marie said, oh, wherever you are uh, in the world, probably in the middle of the night, I have no idea. Um, if you could uh, maybe start uh, going into the comments and you know, letting us uh, where you are lo located and where you're doing and what you're interested in, that would help me um, a lot to then um, tell our presentation uh, that would suit everyone needs. Um, indeed, uh, whole day today we'll be talking about AI and Web3 with all the um, amazing ladies and speakers that Anne-Marie got uh, here today. Um, Web3, and I've, okay, just before I start uh, talking about it, I'm just going to give you some background about myself so you understand where I'm coming from and where I'm speaking from. Um, I've worked in the fashion industry and especially in luxury for almost 20 years. Um, I'm in Paris right now. I've started working in Paris. I've lived in Paris most of my life. I've also uh, studied and worked and lived in New York for a few years. Uh, where I worked at Showroom 7, and then in London, where I worked at Harrods, um, always doing some digital marketing. And even before that, I started doing um, PR and sales uh, for Dior and Givenchy Haute Couture here in Paris. Um, so I've always been uh, working in uh, digital marketing, but I've only got into uh, Web3 um, I started studying mostly during COVID and I really started implementing it in my work, I would say, in the last, uh, in the last month only, really. Um, I started uh, with um, studying the blockchain technology and how it all worked and what it can do for uh, fashion and luxury at large. So that's um, now uh, what I'm using in terms of um, sustainability, if I mean to uh, support sustainability um, policies and um, either traceability of products or even um, proof of ownership of uh, products. And um, that's huge tool for us now in um, secondary market and to enable brands to um, get their hands on the secondary market, which was uh, something that, um, um, <laughs> excuse my French, literally, um, that was something that uh, they didn't have in, well, in, in hands um, before and that now they can, um, start talking into uh, thanks to uh, this amazing technology. Um, doing digital marketing, I've also done obviously a lot of uh, e-commerce and uh, content production. And that's another area where I'm also, you know, using a lot of um, the Web3 uh, technologies, whether uh, with um, AI now. Um, and um, although they um, seem to, you know, uh, I mean, I've been using them, especially in the uh, trying to use them in the fashion technology, but they are not um, originally uh, tailored and engineered for the fashion industry uh, per se. And uh, most of the time, they there is... Um, more, I would say, uh, more development, more advancement in other industries than um, in, in fashion. And that's what I'm also uh, working on, uh, trying to um, uh, build networks to better um, engineer all this and trying to uh, get um, bridges between all the actors of the industry, because I think um, this, uh, yes, $5 trillion market, according to uh, McKinsey, the only thing that could uh, slow this down is a lack of, uh, in my view, of collaboration between the different actors 
of um, of the industry and that's why i hope that uh, initiatives like uh, women of the future or any other uh, business network will um, enable us to uh, get together and for the better investment of um, all this technology that we all love and that we all also uh, especially like to see being applied to um, uh, whether it's fashion or creativity or art in general or what uh, patients are made of. Um, so that's also uh, one of my goals in being with you um, today. Really um, having uh, some issues not knowing exactly who's on the other side of, uh, of the screen because I know you are all very much um, engage already so I would love to know um, exactly um, how everyone is um, um, handling their part of uh, the whole endeavor that we're in yes um, because um, I've talked about uh, marketing, I've talked about engineering, um, but I'm also very much interested in um, questions regarding uh, law, and especially um, intellectual property. Um, and um, the um, relationship that involves with our consumers. Um, all right. Okay, now thanks for the comments. So now, um, okay, I see what, I mean, where you want me to go. So that's good. Um, yes, indeed, um, PR and marketing for sure, they're very much, um, I would say, like, Yes, like marketing in, in general, what we do uh, in PR, it's also a, a pivotal moment um, in history, I think. Um, um, the first thing that's changing um, in PR with um, tech is, um, well, enable us to have better views of um, ahead of campaigns, we can see, um, we can already see what customers are looking for, what they are expecting, what they want and what they need. Um, that's something we obviously couldn't do before and that's a huge, um, huge help to tell the best campaigns um, we can do. Um, of course, there are a lot of tools that makes our job even easier when we um, either produce the campaigns or then send them to uh, to media. As we have uh, better. Um, analytic tools, but also uh, ways of um, organizing databases and um, writing um, materials that needs to be written that I can also be uh, powered by um, AI, but being very careful with this because I didn't have the uh, best experience yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. I'm still testing it, but um, so far it hasn't uh, done exactly what I uh, would hope it to be doing one day, um, but I hope we get there. Um, and um, I, and for that very reason, I do not think that um, journal uh, that uh, sorry um, press uh, work, people working in press relations, press officers, or um, people working in that field would uh, be replaced by AI anytime soon. So uh, you can be over assured there. Uh, it's, it's it's not going to happen. <laughs> it, um, at least for I don't know. Maybe when we get to a quantum computer, for <laughs> then we could stop maybe being worried, but um, not now. Um, another thing that's changed in PR uh, with um, 
Web3, and not just with uh, technology in general, but with Web3 uh, specifically, is uh, now at least, again, in my, that's just my own uh, view and my own experience. Maybe I'm probably not talking for everyone, but um, uh, what changed for me is the um, attention to data, which I didn't have. Um, of course, I was aware of that we were uh, working on that, but um, not as much as I do now um, um, being interested in um, Web3 uh, questions. I get to pop in with you because people are being very shy this morning. I can see how many people are online, but they're not. They're just shy, probably getting their coffee. You've got such an amazing history working with top uh, luxury brands, starting your career at Harrods and working with great brands and, you know, interviewing them for your articles and working on PR. Yeah. What brands do you see are kind of adapting to the emerging tech that we've got going on and which ones do you see are kind of being left behind and why? Because we see a lot like Gucci that are right in there and doing wonderful things. Mm. But with your experience, you've got all aspects of experience with luxury brands. What do you see? Who do you think is going to make it and why? Because you've you've got that insight into how they work in a very intimate level. Um, yes, and um, thanks for the question because that gives me the opportunity to mention something I haven't uh, mentioned so far and I think it's very important is that I've worked in luxury uh, all my life, yes, and for big brands and as well for um, independent uh, designers who do not have uh, the budget of the big brands and mm -hmm. uh, for whom technology is uh, very important because it gives them uh, opportunities and access uh, to markets or to consumers that didn't have access uh, before um, and without having necessarily the big brands budget. Mm -hmm. And I've been very interested in working on that field to see how we can maximize, how we can optimize value of everything we do um, in planning uh, tech. Um, but then to answer your questions more directly uh, in terms of uh, which kind of brands um, will make it or not um, in this new area, uh, there are two things, I think. Uh, obviously, it's um, people, and I would say people inside mm -hmm. or outside the, uh, the company. First off, uh, has to, you know, um, be... Uh, you know, innovation in general always has to be laid by someone inside the company, someone who's really... Um, uh, convinced of the, the the potential and the necessity of um, of going there, and who actually leads that? Um, I was I was going to say transformation, but it can necessarily not be transformation because there already are some some of them very advanced in terms of uh, digital, uh, which mm -hmm. for example, yes. Um, so somebody inside the company, and then also. Um, and that's the reality of things and of the market is um, brands who also have communities that are um, eager, willing, and uh, who have an appetite for it. And I think that the community aspect is really important. I think that, you know, if people have a following, you know, if do you want your avatar dressed in Gucci mm -hmm. or Nike or Adidas or whatever yeah. your favorite thing is, if I'm not a person that buys Louis Vuitton, I'm not going to go by digital assets for my avatar and, you know, and incorporate that into my world because it's just because it's accessible now doesn't mean that I'm mm. bought into it. So I think that it's interesting how people need to really think about that community aspect. I think it's that social influencer side that's really yeah. driving a lot of brands and a lot of companies forward in fashion. Yes. You worked for a classic retailer like Harrods. Yes. So that's, you know, as kind of old very school, very <laughs> that you can get. But do you? How do you see someone like them adapting to this, or or will they? Oh well, um, even though you know they had, um, I just said a very conservative policy um, within their store. Um, back when I was uh, working there, and that was already more than 10 years ago, they are very, very advanced um, in, um, especially in e-commerce, that's what I was, um, I was doing, I was creative manager uh, for the Harvard's platform. And um, the, um, the, uh, 
I think they are just like um, all the older, uh, well-established uh, luxury brands. Um, differences, like you said, they are retailers. Mm -hmm. They are retailer, not uh, not a brand. So they can also uh, transfer that risk onto the brands that they carry. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, and they can, that's one thing, and they can also give a fiat for uh, the, the, the brands that they have uh, to use that floor as uh, one of experimentation to test uh, things in front of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think their on-site and in-store activations could be really yes. interesting if they chose to do that. I mean, they're retailers like that are so beautiful and their displays are so amazing and that's what they're known for like the Harrods windows and the Selfridges windows and all of that but I think that they've got that opportunity but they are maybe limited by the brands that are sponsoring helping you know what's whatever's happening with whoever's sponsoring that area of their store for that section of time yes yeah cool. <laughs> Excellent. And so are there any other trends that you're seeing um, in Web3 for fashion? We only have just a few minutes left, but is there anything else that you're seeing that you're especially excited about? Oh, yes, a lot. Something I've been interested in uh, from the very beginning because I come from Haute Couture. Uh, mm -hmm. The very first uh, brand I worked for, like I mentioned, was Gimanchi Haute Couture. And um, I've always uh, dreamed of having possibility to um, offer consumers um, yeah, the ability to um, all personalized, uh, really tailor-made uh, products from wherever they are in the world to one uh, independent craftsman, also some, some remote place. Um, um, you know, the part of the world. And that's something, yes, that technology now is um, giving us opportunity to. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm very, very excited to be able to uh, to be doing. Excellent. And where can we check that out when what you're working on and where you're writing is? How can we how can we find that? Right now, uh, please follow me on LinkedIn. OK, um, I, yes, thank you, Anne-Marie, because I'm indeed um, launching this in the next uh, next few days. Excellent. Uh, yes, um, be a description of everything yes, that I'm involved in and all the amazing companies that I partner with, with all the amazing brands yes, uh, that I work for and how we build um, communities and, uh, yes, bring um, people together. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for coming today and, and sharing you. your thoughts with us on the industry.